All right, let's bring in Republican strategist Tony Sayeg. I was thanking him while Trey Gowdy was speaking, but Tony, it's so good to have you Great here you, and get friend. your perspective on this. What is your take on all, all that is happening with Hillary Clinton's emails? The only thing that could save her is that time runs out before the election. Clearly, there's a there there. But what do you, you mean know? save her? Because I mean, she's leading in the polls right now, and this is still sort of a non-issue for Democrats. For Democrats, you're right. It's baking the cake. They already assume that she's a typical politician. She's not honest and trustworthy, just like the rest of them. But to independents and those who are already skeptical about Hillary Clinton, this is the issue that they just can't totally get over. And the more it comes out that she has been so deceitful in this whole thing. And Trey Gowdy made a great point. You don't bleach bit. That's the technology she used, by the way, to automatically delete yeah. her emails. Emails about yoga and planning your daughter's wedding. So clearly, there is something she was trying to hide. And to the question of intent, we did get an answer, I think a pretty good one, from the State Department Inspector General, who, by the way, is an Obama administration <laughs> appointee, who said she was trying to prevent her emails from getting uh, basically freedom of information law by Congress. That's why she hosted them on her own that server and deleted them. That was a fascinating part of the story for me, the bleach bit. I, I, I mean, right. you, I know you just mentioned it, but I mean, this isn't like when you're on your Gmail and you press delete and it goes into the little garbage bin. I mean, this was a very purposeful attempt to use that tool to delete those emails. That's like the email goes off to, into the abyss. It never existed. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the, the way she used that tool to get rid of those and it, emails. And it fuels, again, this nagging feeling everybody has. What was she trying to hide? Another important question is, did she consider emails related to the Clinton Foundation? Which, by the way, the Clintons changed the name to the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation. They tried to personalize it, make it a family business. Are those personal emails? Were those emails that she felt in her judgment and that of her attorneys did not belong in the hands of those investigating uh, her more quote unquote public emails? Mm -hmm. These are the questions, again, that are not totally resolved. So, to my initial point, the only thing that helps her get over this stuff is if the clock runs out because no one's going to want to federally indict the President of the United States if that's what she becomes. Kim Strassel in the Wall Street Journal today has a terrific op ed called the U.S. Department of Clinton and refers to her as the U.S. Secretary. <laughs> of the Clinton Foundation because of the, the, the vast overlap between Doug, Doug Band at the foundation basically lining up favors within the State Department for Clinton Foundation donors. But she points out something we've talked about on this program over and over again. It's not about, it, it's not about the, the email server. It's the why that they set the email server up. And it is clearly to keep the secrets and the details of the Clinton Foundation from the public eye. That's why, that's the intent. When you work as a government official, a cabinet secretary in any administration, your correspondence with your staff, with um, your counterparts in other countries, with, with sometimes even the President of the United States, is not your personal property. It's the property of the American people. That's why we have FOIA in the first place. Correct. So that eventually, at a time when it doesn't impact national security interests five years later, ten years later, everything you've said via email can be available to the American people. By, by making the decision to not use her official State Department account, she's denying people that opportunity. And that's the original sin. I think how she decided to store the information is important. The fact that she used bleach bit is important. But really what matters to me as an independent voter when I look at this and someone who used to work at the State Department mm -hmm. and use the system is the original decision. I keep coming back to that because you can't ask everybody else, the th tens of thousands of people who work at the State Department to follow protocol, but not the secretary. And, and how about the fact that it, we clearly know it potentially risked national security. Mm -hmm. The FBI director himself said there's no guarantee that her hosting the server her, herself did not potentially open it up to foreign hacks and other third party hacks. And you bring up Dagan, Doug Band. How about the fact that Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin, her top two aides of the State Department, had also moonlighted at the Clinton Foundation again, this is that co-mingling that just makes everyone feel like there, at the very least, is an appearance of impropriety, which, by the way, is an actual legal threshold. You know, you're not supposed to, as an attorney, even do something that creates the appearance of impropriety.
probably here, there's significantly more than that. You think the Trump campaign and Trump himself is hitting this succinctly enough for it to have an impact? Could, this issue of the foundation and again, basically using it for their own enrichment? It, look, it has an impact. Let, let's, let's face the fact that she continues to have a disapproval rating that's significantly larger than her approval. But she's still viewed as not honest and trustworthy. The Trump campaign has recalibrated the message these last two weeks. We've seen it with the addition of Kellyanne Conway, who's a brilliant message uh, strategist, uh, someone who I've always worked with and, and held in very high regard. They're focused on it. He needs to continue to focus on it because it is actually moving numbers if you look at the recent polls. All right, let's get to this. Following a scorching anti-Trump speech in Nevada, Hillary Clinton dodged questions from reporters by offering them chocolate instead. Take, take a listen. Okay, so for those who are keeping track, it has been 265 days now since Hillary Clinton's held a formal press conference. What do you make of that chocolate? Here, she kept her mouth full of it so that she couldn't speak, <laughs> and then she wanted them to stuff it in their mouth so they couldn't ask her questions. Who needs a press conference when you could have a bonbon? I mean, this <laughs> is the, clearly the, the William McKinley front porch strategy that worked in the early 1900s. She's shielding herself from any real critique, having to account for any direct questions from the media. She's actually insulting the mainstream media in a way that I've never seen a major party candidate ever do, any party candidate ever Donald do. Trump? Well, he might insult their character. But he's out there. He's out there talking to them all the time. Yeah, the accessibility, but, but the excessive, time. we're talking about accessibility. Look, the media will be denigrated if you'll talk to them. Let's face it. I've been part of a press store. As long as you have access to the to the principles, you don't care what they're saying necessarily mm -hmm. back to you. And she is continuing to hide because, again, I think she has. I've really begun to believe this. A run out the clock strategy. Right. This Nevada speech, by the way, was supposed to be about jobs and the economy. It became about Donald Trump as as a, a neo-Nazi racist. Yeah, and he's the he's the. Reason and that bullying is a problem in our school system. We've got to leave it there, Tony, but if the election was held today, what happens? You do not underestimate the American electorate's willingness to disrupt the system, and I believe Donald Trump still has a good chance today. Very good. All right. Thank Tony, you. thanks for being here this morning. Good to have you, Tony. Great to Sayag. see you all. Thank you.